Clinton D'Souza and I'm back with another edition of Sports Encounter with me only on Goa 360. Today I have a world sensation with me, the six times world Ironman championship winner that is Natasha Batman. So welcome to Goa and welcome to Goa 365. First let me ask you, when you came to know that the event, the triathlon is happening in Goa, what, how, what was the excitement, what, that, uh, what is the first thing that came in your mind? You know, I'm traveling through the world my, my last 30 years of my life and doing events. Okay. And always I wanted to go to India. Mm. And my husband said, why do you want to go to India? There is no race. And when there was a race on, I said, yeah, now we can go. <laughs> <laughs> Take the chance. I love to, uh, to explore new countries. And especially, it always uh, also has to fit in my schedule. And so it was just perfect. Okay. When it comes to going in such a sport where you have to run, you need to cycle, you need to swim, like there's a lot of stamina required, there's strength required, but not only physical strength but mental strength. So how do you uh, manage this all kind of components to have a balance and a successful race at the end? Oh, this is a very, very good question. <laughs> so it's, that is what makes the champion, the one who can balance all these things the best. To me, I try to explain it, it's like a big picture. And the big picture is not only made by one color. It has to be different colors yes. and different little points. So it starts building up your training, mm. regular training, continuous training over years that you reach a certain level where you know you're comfortable and you have a certain stamina to, to do a race. But you cannot forget other important, uh, important things, yeah. say the material. Yes. If you have, if you, if I would come here with a mountain bike, it would probably be comfortable, yeah. but I would not be fast. Correct. So these are also important things you need to to change on there. Then you have to watch your diet. Mm. With the wrong diet, you don't achieve yes. to make exactly. the whole race. And it's also a thing of the mind, because uh, when I'm out in the desert and there is nobody who cheers me on or nobody who tells me you should go faster, then it's just my my mind that tells me to go on. And so there are four different points I say my, my big picture is, is based on. So when I was a child, I was not a happy child. I was unsatisfied, I was overweight, and I was not good in sport at all. So don't think that I was born as an athlete. I could not climb uh, those, I could not climb the wall. Um, when we had, when we did games in school, uh, I always was the one with the two right arms and the two left legs. So the teacher, there, when the teacher said, you two guys, you choose a group, they choose a group, and Natasha was left over. And the teacher had to say, okay, and you take Natasha. Um, so it was, they really would never, so if you ask my sporting teacher, they he never thought that I once would be an athlete. I wish I could meet him. <laughs> So uh, it, it was not given, and really when you, um, when I look back myself, or when sometimes today I see an athlete who is suffering with movements because some things he cannot do, I very much can understand because I was the same. If we got a new swimming technique that we had to learn, Natasha had to, to, to train, to train, and after one or two months I finally got it, because I kind of wasn't that coordinated. And then I had friends, and they really were able, to, you, they were told one thing, they could show it. And for me, it took, I, I, I almost, I cried sometimes because it took so long for me to learn things. And then, and then I thought it's not right that others learn it so quick. But it, the benefit of that hard time learning these things came to me when I had races, when I was struggling in races and when I came into mental force, I knew I could do it once. I just had to go and to do it a little bit longer. And uh, I think Iron Man is a very big thing about mental strength. Mental strength helped me huge. Um, through all my career, it was important that I did my physical training. But without my mental training, I would never be the athlete that I came out. So the um, all of the years that I trained my brain, that I programmed, I, I, I was able to say that my, my brain is my like a computer. What I put in, or the thoughts I, I will have during the race, I can make them as I want it. It's my, it's my free choice if I do it or if I don't do it. And what I found out that during my first Ironman in Hawaii or in so many hard situations, 
when I wanted to give up, when it was really hard, there was my mind who could decide, yes, go on, or no, and stop. It's first my thoughts before my body will follow. And this is increased and very deep and very intense what abilities we have, everybody of us has, in the head. You know guys, uh, in a press briefing earlier, Natasha said that she was fat. Like, she had to lose a lot of weight. But I don't think there's, there's even one you know, extra percentage of fat that I can see in her body at the moment. But she's actually like a role model for many people in Switzerland and across the world also and I and I'm sure after watching this episode that there are many women in Goa who will be like okay Natasha is my role model to get into fitness so what are, how did you go about tell us tell me that journey where you said okay I need to lose so much of weight and I need to be into fitness and in sports that was a, it was a kind of a first I had to realize why I was unsatisfied I had a life, the life was good, I didn't miss anything, I, I, I was living well, I had good food, and my apartment was nice, I had a work, I had a job, but I was missing something, I was not satisfied. And so I, saw, I thought it's just because I'm overweight, I wanted to lose weight. So then I did some diets and uh, by the end of the week I realized that the diet doesn't, doesn't work the way I did it. And then finally I met uh, my husband or my coach and he said, listen, First of all, you have to stop the diet, eat. And I loved him because he told me that. Can you imagine I wanted to do diet and he said me eat? Honestly, I will interrupt. The there is on this note, I will interrupt why, you know. Because in my office, we have a gang of us, uh, like my colleagues with us. And I always tell them, like, stop eating this junk, stop eating oil. Because I don't eat oil. I'm like, stop eating oil, stop eating this fat food, make, make your diet. And for that very second, they are like, okay, we'll do it, we'll do it. I'm going to do it. I send them YouTube videos, everything, and I say I'm going. To, they say that I'm going to do it. But as soon as I turn my back, they are back to the So I want to know whether you did that or you continued with your diet. Yes. See, I did not continue with my diet. I started to eat real healthy food. I learned a little bit more about food. I knew it's not smart to eat a piece of chocolate every hour. How I did. <laughs> I tried to uh, not skip it because it was too hard. I would fall back. But I started to eat more healthy food. I started to eat veggies, I started to eat pasta, and so I have real plain food with not too many bad fats. Yeah. That was the first step, but this was not changing completely from one direction to the other. So it was a slowly movement to yeah. the other side. And then uh, Tony also said, it's not only about diet, you also should start moving a little bit. No. This part, this part I did not like, the, the food, it was easier for me to handle than to start training because I, I more preferred doing nothing. Yeah. And by, uh, by realizing how much better I felt, even though when I went out for a short time, when, how better I felt when I had a time for myself. I always was more satisfied when I came back and I always was so happy that I went out. Also first that I had kind of those inner excuses that said, oh, you can stay home, it's not so important. <laughs> Especially for women, they always have that kind of excuses where they think they're not allowed to go out. But there is always time to get 20 minutes for a workout. You so see, you give your time for a workout. Like, uh, being a woman, you also have other responsibilities, other roles to play, your domestic roles your household. So how do you manage when it comes to your domestic and your personal activities and so So from a certain point on it was kind of give myself a little gift. Yeah. And when I looked it at the way that I did not have to train, yeah. that it was a gift. I got 20 minutes for myself to be clear with my brain, to get out, to think what I want to think, to listen to music or listen to outside noises. Um, then it got something that I knew, okay, I, this is the right for me that I can do 20-30 uh, minutes of training. In, uh, my day has 24 hours. It's possible to take that little part out. It's a, it's a peaceful island. And that's how I looked at it. And from the moment I looked at it like it was a little present for me, it was much easier to follow. Then it was not so much a must, you have mm, to. Correct. So now it's six times Iron Man, or oh, I should call it the Iron Lady, I can Thank say. Thank you. Okay, the Iron Lady, the title winning six times. So what is your next step? My next step, I was in triathlon for so many years, 
And I know I'm not. I'm now at the age where I'm not going to win Ironman World Champion titles unless I do it in my age category. With it's not with it's not really a goal because I won it in the main class. So what I want to do is I really want to inspire people. I know how my life cha changed, and I know how happy I got with doing the sport. And when I can influence people of of, of getting a little bit more active and seeing how vitalizing this is and how much joy it can bring. So this is what I really want to do now. There's a complete different change for you, like Switzerland, where you have traveled even other countries like America, different Australia. There's a climate change. There are peop different kinds of people, there are different kinds of atmosphere. So how do you uh, rate Goa and India when it comes to atmosphere, people and the surrounding around you? You know, I had so many nice experiences. One day I was running out and I mostly was checking uh, the floor, the street <laughs> ahead of me because I didn't want to step into, into something. And from the moment on I looked up, I also saw those beautiful faces smiling at me and those dark eyes and those colors. And then I ha had to ha bring my head back, back on the street. To the floor. But it, it really, it's a, it's a wonderful experience. And I somehow always knew that I wanted to come here. Uh, it just it just took some time, but now the right is time, and I'm very happy that I'm here because I explore everything with all the sentences that I have. Namaskar. How to do it? For two to Jamuka Girata, ISI Margazo, ISO Pramari, Super, Heavy Duty, Strong, Shika Mixer, Hatunasa, one HP copper motor, thin stainless steel, Kankaritsa, Ani, Clipasini, Thakani, Ani Hosa, Shika Grander, Hosa, Sora was up and no. How to do it? Ani Asukuza, Atun Tunka Meta. Two special attachments, absolutely free. One is a pit car, and the other is a null case. And the other is an exchange offer, and the other is a little bit of 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 एक वर्ष वॉरंटी के साथ आइजूस फोन करा घरातल्यांची आवड निवड सांभाळपाची प्रत्येकाच्या आरोग्याची काळजी घेऊपाची केन्नाय चूक घडता ती हासून भरपाची तातून मजा स्वतः खातीर सवड काढपाची शेवटी जबाबदारी ती घर चलवपाची या सगळ्यां मका साथ असा फक्त प्रभु देसाय इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स जी प्रत्येक घरा खातिर घरातल्या प्रत्येक खातिर प्रभु देसाय इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स question when you said you had to manage your 20 minutes it was like a gift for you but what was the most challenging part when uh, you said you had to lose weight or what was the most challenging part for you to get into all this the most challenging part was the first step really to decide I want to do it okay. because if someone would told me do it it would not be the same it has to come for me mm. it had to come from my inner self from the moment on I said I want to do it, I took my, I, I made myself kind of a rule, those three times a week. I said three times a week I take the time, it's my gift, I do it for myself. And then I really came to those points where I had excuses and I wanted to push it away because I was scared of training or too lazy. And so it really is that kind of you have to make some commitment with yourself and this is on different level. Everybody has it on a, on a, on a other level. And this is also to respect 
but uh, I only can say for me, it always made me happier when I returned. And now you said when you return. Some things, uh, on that note, I think we will take a short rapid fire kind of. I'll ask you like five questions. Based on five, you need to be very quick. You don't need to think. Whatever first thing comes in your mind, you just need to give it up. Okay? One thing that you are going to take home from Goa. A s nice, wonderful scarf. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, everyone has a cheat day. On your cheat day, what are three things that you do the most? Or you love doing the most? Three? Honey? Yeah, three. Oh, I normally do one. <laughs> okay, yeah, if, then you can mention the one. Because for me, cheat day is five things. <laughs> five things. All right. So, I eat chocolate. Okay. I love chocolate. I'm, uh, I'm a chocolate tiger. And when I cheat, I cheat on chocolate. Okay. Uh, when you, uh, who do you see as your role model? Like you are a role model to everyone else, but for you, who's your role model? When I started triathlon, I had inspiring athletes that achieved more than I did, and so I really followed them and I saw uh, what what they brought to me. But I also had a great yoga teacher that inspired me a lot. I had, as I said, it's a bright picture. It would not be right to just pick one the whole influence that I got from all different kind of persons was who made who made me. Finally, I think the most influence I got was from my coach and husband, Tony, because he always sought the, the, the possibilities in me. Okay. Next rapid fire will be, you said you like to party a lot. Party is very important. Like given a choice, party or chocolate, what would you choose? Chocolate first. <laughs> <laughs> And if there is, it's a chocolate party then? <laughs> the whole party. <laughs> then, then the whole party. <laughs> okay. One thing you will take from India, besides the shawl, what is, uh, what will be your, uh, I mean, uh, what will be your favorite food? I, I think you must have tasted few. Like you said, you met the chef and you, you have a nice chef. So what is that one thing, besides your diet food, what is that other food that you would love to, or you will crave once you go back? Um, I will crave all the spices, but I will not actually crave them because I'm going to take someone with me. Oh. I always thought I have many spaces because in my garden I have uh, I have many things that I can pick and put into into my food. But now that I had all these other, I my, <laughs> my nose starts to to vibrate. <laughs> now that I got all the, these other influences, it, it's great. It's really uh, something that we we do not have or we do not do. And uh, I have uh, also in my kitchen spices, but not as many as I will have when I return. Uh, I follow a special diet, say the days before the race. So um, generally, I never eat fried things and I don't eat meat. So I don't have a problem with that at all in Goa. But then uh, for the week itself, during these days, I eat mostly veggies. Uh, so no carbs and um, sometimes hard if I see the nice things they build up and the sweets. I tried some of them and I really love the Goan or the, or the Indian food. I also love the curries. But I try to stay really on, on steamed veggies this day. And prior to the race, I will take in more carbs. And after the race, party. <laughs> so I'm going to try all the spices that I, that I uh, did, discovered a little bit and I really like that. Normally during the year, I also stay away from fried and I also stay away from meat. But uh, during the year, it's not so strict that I watch uh, that I watch my diet. It's more also I very much enjoy food. Actually, that is why I was all way that started to train, and it was only that factor that that made me training because coach said, "Listen, if you want to lose weight, you have to eat. You don't have to do diets." And I loved that. And then he said, "But you have to move a little bit." I did not like this part too much. <laughs> and so I still like food a lot and I, I love the different tastes and I think India is a great place for this. You know, the, my, I only want to ask you, when it comes to sports and fitness, like what is more important to begin something, to begin it? I mean to say, uh, when it comes to sports and fitness, when you need to go out and perform it, what plays a major role? The dedication, the fitness, I would say the joy. If you don't find joy in what you're doing, you will not do it. For me, it, it always was important to have joy. I wouldn't last so long as I lost it if there was not always something that I said I enjoyed it a lot. 
no matter what it is, and sometimes even think that seem hard right now, they probably seem joyful when you look back because you knew, you knew or, or you realize that the hard moment where it was, one day brings you a victory and then you think, oh, the hard work had to be done, yeah. that one day I become strong. But without joy, if it's always pain or suffer or must, or it, it cannot work for a long time. Uh, Natasha, you know, in India, uh, they say once you are married, you have added responsibility. You have a family, you have a husband, you have your in-laws, you have your kids. And then, uh, majority women in India, they they say it's better we handle that than going outside and doing something. Like, I don't say that there are everyone who does it, but there are few who are deprived or say they don't want to opt it because they are too busy. So, how did you, what will be your message towards such kind of women in India? Just to say, at least give 20 minutes of your time towards yourself and see how life will be beautiful. I, I completely understood, understand these women. I, I was in the same situation. I did work, and after work, I thought now I have to go home and do my household and take care of my children. So I, I thought it's unfair if I take those 20 minutes. But to realize how much satisfaction you get and how much happiness you get by doing something for you. So I recommend to those women when the man is out of the house <laughs> and the kids are going out, get your 20 minutes, take a step in your home wh while you watch TV. Do something when you, when you, um, when you have a free time. Walk around the block or take, take a walk to another place. I know in big cities it's, it's probably not possible. Yeah, exactly. But wherever it's possible, get your 20 minutes. Do something you like. If you like to dance, go out and dance with a group to some music. Do something you like do something that inspires you because if it inspires you it will give you it will give you joy it will give you energy and this is what finally is not only for the wife or for the woman itself she will spread it to her family Correct. and her kids suddenly will say well, why are you so happy or the husband will say what's wrong with you nothing's wrong she, she is just <laughs> happy because she did something and this is you, you don't know how it is until you do it so please go out and try this is what I would suggest um, my time, I had no support. It was me and the belief of my coach, so very important. Um, he believed that I had the ability to do things and he helped me. It was not, of course, now after many victories, um, it's more common, it's in every journal. Um, young athletes see that it could be possible. But my time, should I tell you another story? I, I, I trained. I trained, so I was running through my village. People knew me, they knew Triathlon Swiss Champion, and then came the day where my little apartment was too little and I wanted to have a treadmill. So the only place to put the treadmill was to have a bigger house or at least have a barn to put the treadmill in. And so after a long search, we found the barn and the house, so it was old, but we moved it as as it should be for our training. And the barn was my training place. But I did not always want to run on the treadmill in winter, so in summer I went out. But I was living in another place, just to tell you how sporty Switzerland is. So I was running through that new place, which had a train station, tra train ra railway going through, and when the train came, those ping, 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 they went down. And I had to stop because I wanted to pass. So I stopped there and was running in place. And there was a farmer's woman working in the garden. And she said to me, I said, hi, I was running in place. And she said to me, hey, if you have nothing to do, you better come and help me dig wheat. <laughs> so I hope that answers your question the best. So let me tell how I came into triathlon. I was not born as an athlete, and in my youth, I was not an athlete either. So it only came that I started taking care of my health when I was about 23 years old. I started with running, and my running was not that I started with marathon running. I was running for two Ks. It took me about 20 minutes, and I felt great because I did it. So what my, uh, a lot of my, my 
mission today is I want to get people into sport, I want to get people into health, because what you can achieve is probably not said before you did it. So you can work for it and then my, maybe one time you have the best day of your life and the best day of my life was when I won Ironman first time. So it was the Ironman World Championship in Hawaii that I never ever thought I would take part when I started. But when I was there and that feeling, that is a very special feeling, it's so, it's so deep, it's so intense, it's so unique, it stays with you for the rest of your life. It's a happiness that you always can rem remember of and it always comes immediately back to you. And so for me, if I think about it, I get goosebumps and I still feel like I have the energy that I want to share, the happiness that I want to share with the entire world. And it is what brought me, what made me to do Iron Man for so many times. And it is what I want to bring on and pass on to other athletes or other people today. Yes, Natasha just said it. I just said it that it's time to be happy and be for yourself. At least those 20 minutes. Those 20 minutes actually can make a difference. On that note, thank you so much, Natasha, for being a part of Goa 365 and Sports Encounter. We wish you all the very best. We hope that you win more and more world titles, make uh, Switzerland and even everyone proud and be a role model for women across the world and also some men who say at least those who are like, oh no, but at least you set up an example for a man at least to come, go out, do something. Thank you so much and wish you all the very best. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you.